Hebrew University in 2001. And uh, Dr. Ken Rao was one of her mentors. <laughs> she currently works with the Institute for Liturgical Ministry, which offers educational and formational programs in liturgy and liturgical music across the United States and Canada. She writes the Music Notes column for the Quarterly Journal of Liturgical Ministry and is co-author of the annual publication, Living Liturgy. Her other publications include the Ministry of Cantors, the Ministry of Music, and the, ministry, and the Mystery We Celebrate, The Song We Sing, A Theology of Liturgical Music. Kathleen is a member of the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur, the religious congregation of which Dorothy Stang martyred in the Amazon in 2004 for her work protecting the land rights of the poor and the ecology of the Amazon forest was a member, a sister, a friend, and um, we are really honored that you came to share uh, with us uh, and it was uh, the Spirit's timing for this lecture on Eucharist, ethics, and ecology that um, meant that tomorrow's Earth Day. <laughs> we did not intend Plan that, that um, but um, to have a saint who truly um, mm -hmm. fought to preserve both the life of those who were living on the Earth and the Earth itself. So let me uh, then say one other thing. And um, uh, at 5.45, we're going to take a break and invite you to go down and grab um, a plate of food, Indian food tonight, right? Yes. 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 USA. Uh, USA Indian food and come back at 6 o'clock. So. Now we're going to do introductions? Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Oh, this is about the yeah. Or we'll do introductions maybe after our meal. Now, if I could, just this paragraph here about the opera where it says the, the man who wrote the opera, in, in late 2005 he attended a lecture at this church in Madisonville, Ohio, the speaker of the told the story. I was the speaker. <laughs> it was purely accidental. He was the music director, but he was a full-time doctoral student in music at CCM. He did not want to come on this Saturday. He was exhausted. The pastor said, you have to come. So he got out of bed and came. And I, I talked about Eucharist, and then I talked about Dorothy. And he called his wife at the break of 10 o'clock and said, I am so glad I'm here this morning. And then when he left, he said, this is my doctoral dissertation. I am writing an opera. That's the story of this nun. That just gives you, and you can go on to um, the internet mm -hmm. and um, see yes. sections. That will be the next one, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be the next one. Mm -hmm. Which, again, I'm going to talk for a while first. That will be the third one. Okay, okay thank you. Um, one of the exciting things that was here, even when I was at Drew, is um, getting to meet so many people from so many places around the world, so many different backgrounds, and so many different religious Christian traditions. That um, One of the reasons why I chose to come to Drew was the ecumenical uh, element of the program, and, and I learned a lot as a consequence. I also learned for me, by being in an ecumenical environment as I did my studies, I not only stretched what I knew by encountering other approaches to Christian worship, but it, it clarified for me what my approach as a Roman Catholic was in really good ways. I could see more clearly what it was I had committed my particular faith life to. Now, as I talk this afternoon, I'm going to begin by talking about Eucharist, and I am going to do some talking that is Roman Catholic, because I'm here to talk about Dorothy Stang, what the Eucharist meant for her, what this did in the development of a living of an ethical life that every day had practical applications. And that she, she realized quite some time before her martyrdom, it was very clear to her that if she continued the ethical choice she was making, 
the way she was implementing Eucharist in daily living, that her life, she would pay for it with her life. You need to know that um, she was martyred. I have that wrong in my notes I sent you. She was actually martyred in 2005. February 2005. She was home in the States visiting the summer of 2004 with us mm -hmm. in uh, Dayton and Cincinnati area. And in one of our conversations with her, our provincial superior at the time, Elizabeth Boyer, said, Dorothy, we don't think you should go back because we're very concerned. Mm -hmm. And Dorothy said, I must go back. They are my people. If my life has to be given, it is given for the lives of my people. And that was June of, June, July of 2004 by February 2005. Her blood was in the dirt on a dusty road in the Amazon. We also have in Cincinnati in our provincial archives, and, and this is a wonderful story. I just I have so many stories I have to tell about Dorothy. I want to talk about the theology and the ethics too, which I will be, but they're so related to the, the human stories about Dorothy because, again, I'm speaking as a Roman Catholic. Saints are so alive for us, but saints are not relics. Saints are not just, oh, this person lived a thousand years ago and it doesn't really mean anything. Saints for us, are people still living. They live fully in the arms of God. They are fully into what God is drawing each one of us to. God is drawing each one of us completely into the embrace of God in the process that the Eastern Church calls theosis. God's work to divinize us. And the saints are simply persons that the Catholic community looks at and says, this person has been completely, the theosis in God's work is, is completely done and they're just shine. And they're real. We talk to these people. I talk to Dorothy a lot. I was telling Heather earlier this day, Dorothy stood up for justice and was fighting international global forces, destroying the lives of her people and the Amazon. And she, she was like made of iron. But you will see in some of the film clips I'm going to show, whenever she was speaking, there was this gentleness in her voice. And I'm going, because right now, I'm pretty mad at some people. <laughs> I, there's some very difficult things going on in my parish. I'm very angry, and I'm not being gentle about it at all. So I, every night I say, Dorothy, keep me faithful to what is just and true. Keep me caring for the needs of the people, but somehow you've got to make me more gentle about it. All right, that said, I was, um, so I'll keep weaving in actual stories of Dorothy as I talk, and my point here is that the saints for us as Catholics are, they're human beings who are still living, and they're not relics of the past, they're not just myths, they, they're persons that we actually do, we talk to, we do not worship them, God alone, God alone is the object of our worship. But these are human beings that we talk to and ask for their assistance as we continue to live a truly Christian, loving, ethical life here. Now, in the story of Dorothy has to also begin with the fact that as a young child in Dayton, Ohio, large Catholic family, nine kids, you know, this is typical Catholic family, very active in their Catholic parish, and celebrating the Eucharist on a regular basis on the Sunday to Sunday celebration of Eucharist was of high importance for that family. But their celebration of the Eucharist, you can see from the way they lived even when she was a child, was not a ritual. You don't go to Mass on Sunday because you're supposed to go to this ritual and you get it in. It completely shaped the way they lived. And one of, one of the wonderful stories about Dorothy, um, they lived in a, an edge of the town of Dayton. They themselves were not impoverished. They were just a simple family. Their father, who was highly educated, did sustainable farming on their property so that during years when there was not food in the aftermath of the Depression, the family was eating because he was doing sustainable farming there and teaching them. And Dorothy was, of all the children, she loved it. She used to spend all this time with her dad out in the garden. She loved doing this work. Um, and one day, her mom came home from running errands, and Dorothy's in the kitchen, 
She's got all this bread her mother 